Homes with Ken, he's a leader here in West Michigan for real estate agents. The big thing is his uh, the veteran community that he's established for real estate. Um, he has a huge following, and I'm also following him as well because I am a Marine veteran, and he's also my sponsor in EXP, and he's one of the leaders uh, for EXP, so I'm glad to have him on the show today. Thanks for having me, Eric. I definitely appreciate it. Appreciate it. No problem, no problem. Yeah, so you were recruiting in West Michigan for a number of years. Um, you also recruited my brother. That's how we connected on one level there. So uh, thank you for doing that, and it's uh, made him a lot better. So I'm grateful for your leadership there. Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he followed your footsteps, so, so it didn't take me too much. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure do a lot of parents come back to you and say thank you for helping my son as far as that was very impactful on the direction of his life. Yeah, that, I mean, that's that's one of the things that uh, that I miss about being in the service is having the parents, not only the parents either, but uh, having those Marines that are coming back to me and saying thank you for what I helped them achieve. Um, a lot of people say, oh, he's your recruiter and you still talk to him? Yeah. Well, yeah, when, when you're an honest person, obviously they're going to come back to you and they're going to still talk to you. It's those who are dishonest that they don't maintain contact. Right, right. That's, it's really impressive. Uh, you know quite a few people in West Michigan. I'm sure your list of contacts has got to be, what, over a 1,000 people? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do know a lot of people. I, it, it helped me out because uh, I was in recruiting for so long in the West Michigan area. Uh, so I'm just reconnecting with those same veterans that I had already had connections with before. And then, as you know, you know, veterans, they hang out with veterans. They know other veterans. So it just keeps adding on and adding on to the contacts that I'm able to achieve and able to, to get from those veterans that I already know. Yeah. And you see a lot of the needs for the veterans as well. You've started a few groups over the years. Uh, what are those groups and how, how has that impacted the community? Well, the, uh, the, the, I didn't start this one, but I became affiliated with it once I retired from the Marine Corps after 22 years. Hoorah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for uh, service. Most definitely. Thank you. Uh, 92 for 22 is a nonprofit organization uh, raising awareness for veteran suicide and PTS in the community. And as you know, the reason why we want to raise the uh, the we want to raise the awareness in the community is because we as veterans are very um, how do you want to say it? Um, is it a good word or a bad word? <laughs> you know, it, it's a, it's a good or we we just we don't like asking for help because right. we're stubborn, right? You know, so when we raise the awareness in the community, that allows our community members to be able to see the signs within a veteran. If they need assistance, then that now they can reach out for that veteran to get the assistance. Yeah. Um, so that's on the outside, uh, 92 for 22. Um, we do a 92 mile walk every year. It takes about four days because we don't go straight through. We we do take breaks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you, as you're retired, you're probably you probably need those breaks. Back in the day, you probably could have pulled it off in two days, right? And it's funny. We always we start off with backpacks and boots and everything. You know, we're all rah rah mm -hmm. and uh, few miles into it we're changing into go fasters tennis shoes you know right, yeah and uh taking the backpacks off and just enjoying uh, the walk after that <laughs> yeah yeah I but can't imagine it doesn't matter you know it doesn't matter how many miles you walk it's raising the awareness that's that's the most important thing and uh, as long as we're doing that it doesn't matter if you have boots on it doesn't matter if you have your backpack on uh raising awareness for those 22 veterans on average to take their life every day is the the biggest thing yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. Thanks so much for starting that and leading that. Uh, that's a big time commitment, four days. And and the, are you a little bit sore after that? I can a little Very bit. much sore. <laughs> and then as far as, have you met a lot of people because of that? Like what's been the biggest uh, veteran community that you're involved with today? Um, that That is the biggest veteran community that I'm involved with today. And I, I like that because um, every day, continuing to, to touch more and more veterans to, to reach out to them, to get to know them. Um, the first Tuesday of every month, we have a gathering over at uh, Coopersville Brewing Company. And it's just a pretty much veterans meeting up. And so we've the, the, the last time that we had it, we had majority of our, our regular supporters that showed up. But then while we're there, there were other veterans that were visiting that didn't know about our group. So we're able to contact with them and give them some of our, our flyers and things so that they know about us and they know about the every first Tuesday of every month being able to go there. Yeah. Well, that's a great uh, segue into business. Uh, since you are networking and communi uh, communicating with a lot of veterans out there, 
Um, what are some of the communities you're excited to get into this upcoming year or the future? What's something you're working on right now? Um, well, I, I think the, the most exciting thing that I'm being a part of now is with EXP. I've been with EXP for a year now. Okay. Um, came over there. Not, not exactly sure of everything to expect. So I took it, a, you know, I, I figured out what EXP was all about before I started talking to other people about EXP because I wanted to make sure that I liked it first. Yeah. Um, once I figured out that I liked it, then now is a matter of what types of communities do I want to be involved with with EXP. And one of the, the communities that they just started this past year is called the Military Network. Okay. So it's EXP Military Net. Um, and I'm a, a co-squad leader for the state of Michigan. We have two squad leaders here, uh, and just being a part of that. And what we do is we get other veteran agents, um, veteran spouses that are agents, and we try to build that camaraderie that we had while being in the military with agents within EXP. So, I mean, it, it helps out because it's a, a network community that we have. Yeah. If some for some reason, we have a, a referral on in a different area than what we're used to working, say, the side of the state. Yeah. I can I have somebody who I can refer my clients to. Yeah. And in Florida. So you're uh, licensed down in Florida and now. In Florida, <laughs> yes. I am licensed in Florida. <laughs> That's pretty impressive because I think you've been networking for maybe a month now and you already have, you are talking about making a deal happen down there already and just kind of like this is supposed to be a secondary home and you're doing business you're just always what? doing business man always always got to be working you know <laughs> uh, i i i was able to figure out i mean the biggest thing is with with the florida is that i had clients that were going down there to buy houses buy condos but i was referring them to another agent mm-hmm. so i mean i was like why should I refer them to another agent? If I can get my license down there, I can be the one to actually take care of them. Right. And and go from start to finish, helping them here in Michigan and then helping them down in southern Flo- or southern Michigan, which is Florida, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but A lot of Michigan people down there, shout out to you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I went, I found out because being military that I was able to get my license down there um, a little bit easier than most people, which, you know, I'm glad that taking mm. that test is, is difficult. So I'm glad that I was able to get that waiver. Yeah. Um, and that was just, it was one of my goals that I had for 2022. Yeah. Um, my first goal was to become an associate broker here in Michigan, which I was able to achieve that. Get a, Congrats. thank you, getting a real estate license in Florida and then also helping 19 veterans either buy or sell a home. And 2022. Yeah. Some people are like, why 19? <laughs> now what? Why not? I'll never, I don't know. That's just the number I came up, yeah. up with at the beginning of the year and, yeah. and went with it. <laughs> yeah. well, it, was, it was great that you uh, shared that with me. I was really surprised that you can collect so many licenses in, in other states. Um, you were able to apply and get your license in, real st- uh, in, in, in Florida really easy. Um, how many other states there are, and I forget the term, I, I know there's a term for it, but how many other states are allow you to have, hold your license in multiple states? So it's it, any any state you can hold a license in. It's a matter of which brokerage you're with if you're going to be able to be with that same brokerage while holding a license in another state. Okay. Um, I'm not sure exactly uh, what states that that I would still be able to go to and just apply at. Um, but it would, it all comes to the brokerage, you know. Yeah. Having one brokerage fee, having one cap to where if you're with another brokerage, you may have to find a different brokerage down there if they don't have that one, you know? Right. Um, so. so it was crucial that you worked for a national broker. Worldwide. <laughs> okay. A worldwide brokerage? Worldwide, worldwide, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you may have pitballed out in Florida as well, probably. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's you know, awesome. That, it's, it's been great. I mean, I, I have, uh, I, I've got agents down there that I'm talking with that are going to be coming over with EXP. Okay. Um, I have agents in Texas that I'm talking with. So it's great to be able to be a part of an organization where I don't have to hold it just to myself that I'm able to reach out to other veterans that are now becoming real estate agents and becoming a part of EXP, not necessarily with Homes with Ken, but still a part of EXP to where if I'm sponsoring them, and I'm going to be able to sh- share my knowledge with them, my marketing with them, and then they apply it to their areas. So really you're, what you're saying, EXP has really put gasoline on your networking capability. Sounds like you're expanding into multiple states now. Most definitely. I, I'm, I'm excited for it just because it's like I didn't, I never, 
that's not something that I knew I would be able to take advantage of moving over to EXP. Right. Now that I'm here, I've learned so much more about it, and which is allowing me now to speak more knowledge or knowledgeably. Yeah. I guess that's the word. Yeah. More knowledgeable. Well, I, I, get, I get what you're saying. <laughs> more knowledgeable about the resources that EXP has to provide for the agents. Yeah, no, it's 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 awesome to see that you're. This is just helping you become a better agent, better leader, um, and then you're you're looking to as far as I didn't. Think, I was trying to ask a question that um, you could apply in Florida with very little. You didn't have to go through the st- uh, the big testing or anything like that. It was just sit through class or something like that. Whereas all other states will do that. I think you need to do a two hour class in some states or one hour class in other states. Um, so if you are if, you, if someone has family members or they grew up in a certain area, they can hold their license in Texas or Carolina pretty easy well, just sitting through a, a class. They don't have to go through the federal test again with the 40 hours. So it's pretty pretty simple, right? Yeah. Well, see, with Florida, it's it's for military, active military, uh, former military, and then military spouses. Yep. As long as they maintain a license in another state, then they can apply for the military exemption. Okay. So it. it Veterans are getting taken care of in that sense where we're the only ones that can do that. Other people have to go through the federal testing or state testing. Correct. They still have to go through the the, the pre-licensing course, okay. take the test, and then after the post-license course, depending on where you're at, if they are in that. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's nuts. I didn't know that. We had such an advantage as veterans, as real estate agents, that we can move, bounce around states very quickly where other people have to go through much more testing where the, I'm not sure why they do that, but it's a benefit as a veteran. And that's one of the cool things that you do is you share with veterans, the benefits that they can have in real estate, whether you're a consumer or you're a professional, you're helping both sides, the your clients and other real estate agents. Yeah. Most definitely when it comes to assisting veterans, uh, with me being, being a veteran myself, if if I can help benefit their career, then that's what I'm going to try to do. And I'm not going to be talking to somebody about making a move or, or joining EXP if I didn't firmly believe that it was the best decision that I made. Um, and then the same thing goes, too, for my clients um, or any veteran client that's out there looking for a, a house. Uh, I provide education to other agents on how to assist their veteran clients. And... I know because I can't, as much as I would want to help every single veteran that's out there, I know that I can't. Right. But if I'm helping educate the agents that are there, even if they're not with the same agency as me, yep. if I'm educating them on, on to better serve their veteran clients, then that's a win for me. Because that means that a veteran is going to become a homeowner. And I'm a firm believer that if a veteran is a homeowner, they're going to be less likely to take their life because now they have that sense of it uh, of ownership. Absolutely. And no, I, I agree 100% when you have something you're proud of, a place that you can call home and raise your family and better your lifestyle. That's that's huge for giving people encouragement every single day to, to do better and to, to live a better life. And you're doing that. And it's such an inspiration that that's your passion. And that's a great uh, seg- segue into why did you get in? It seems like you were helping people as far as um, getting into the military and having a stable career and learning those disciplines. And then afterwards, why did you choose real estate? Once I retired? <laughs> yeah. Retired? <you> know? <laughs> um, I, I, a big reason is because being a recruiter for as long as I was, I was in the cells. Yep. Um, I didn't like like it. Yeah. So I thought I was going to have nothing to do with sales, you know? Yeah. Um, but Darcy Fritz, yeah. um, she's actually on, on the EXP team now too, but she was the one that was constantly talking to me about becoming a real estate agent because she was a real estate agent. Yep. And it was just like, she told me to get it before I retired, to get my license before I retired. And I just kept putting it off, putting it off. And then finally it was like, retirement was coming. And I'm like, okay, you know, what am I going to do? Yeah. So uh, that's when I, I got into real estate and then she took me under her wing. She was actually my, my mentor when I first started real estate. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> so, awesome. um, and then we went over to the, I was in the same agency with her up until I moved over to EXP. And then uh, just recently, I believe it was either in uh, October or November, her and her husband came over to EXP and I, I sponsored them. Oh, so wow. the kind of the, the roles flipped a little bit. She, yeah. she brought me into real estate. I brought her over to EXP and now I, I help her out yeah. uh, with her real estate. Yeah. Well, it seems like you took off right from the get go. Um, 
what was so that first year when you were in what did that feel like and it seemed like you had a plan from the, from the beginning and there was a lot of people supporting you how did that first year shape up and, and did it feel natural my first year in real estate yeah um it was a little bit it, it was tough at first just because uh, i had to pretty much what i was doing is uh, everything that i learned with Marine Corps recruiting, I kind of put that into real estate herbage, I guess, yeah. for, for a, a lack of other terms, you know. Um, and I took everything that I learned, and especially when it comes to the data also, um, knowing that 90 days of data. Yep. Same thing was with recruiting, 90 days of data. You find somebody who wants to join the Marine Corps, and then it's going to take, you know, a little bit of time to, to get them going. Same thing you, with real estate. You find somebody who is looking for a house. Um, it may take you 30 days to find a new client and then 30 days to find them a home and then 30 days to s close on that house yeah. for them to become homeowners. So that's all 90 day cycle. But what you have to keep in mind yeah. is that you are not working for this month. You're working for those months to come. So yes, you may have a good month this month, just like with recruiting. You might yeah. recruit a lot of people in this month, but if you yeah. stopped working, it's going to affect you later on. So I just, I, I took that whole mentality of you have to know that you're not working for this month, you're working for the months to come. I know that if I go on vacation in January, yeah. you know, in April or May is when I'm going to know the effect of that if I didn't continue working while I was on vacation. So, so you, since you had somewhat of a sales background because of the recruiting that you did, it was pretty easy for you to say, and I need a pipeline of 50 plus or 100, 200. What, what was there a number that you were looking for? You're, you knew a lot of people, so I'm sure there was hundreds of people in there. How did you kind of uh, filter out the motivated buyers and sellers in the in the sphere that you had coming out of the military? Um, I didn't really do much filtering because once people f found out that I was in real estate, that's when um, they would reach out to me and. Uh, I would just I was helping those who reached out to me, and then the more and more that I did it, utilizing that that free marketing, being yeah. social media, oh, yeah. um, utilizing that, I think helped me out a lot too because people were seeing that after being in the service what I was doing, and they were seeing how I was helping veterans. That's what allowed me to to become that that the veteran certified real estate agent. Yeah, um, I do have a a form that says that, so I can say it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I saw um, that the other day, like you were, had some kind of title yeah. and I asked you about it and you're like, yeah, that was kind of a class I did, but. Yeah, it was a class that I did. I got a certificate and I got a little wooden logo behind my desk at home. So. <laughs> I need to get one of those. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it, it just, I mean, not to, it, it just, it happened. You know, mm -hmm. I continue to, to put out that I'm a real estate agent that will work with veterans. I mean, to the point to where some people ask me, do you only work with veterans? I'm like, no, I work with anybody that yeah. is looking to buy or sell a home I could work with. Um, but I have that specialty to work with the veterans because I took it upon myself to learn as much as I can about the VA home loan and the process. Yeah. That way it allows it to streamline so that we can get rid of that negative um, stigma that the VA home loan has with some of these older agents or agents that have been around for a little bit, not necessarily older, mm -hmm. but, um, and when I talk with those agents and they see that I'm speaking intelligently about the VA home loan process, I think that helps out when it comes to them um, recommending their their sellers to accept the offer. Yeah. So as far as, far as your brand, you've uh, stayed pretty loyal to the veteran community. You haven't wavered. Have you experimented in any other kind of sales tactics or have you kind of stayed true? And that's been, been the one thing that's always, um, provided and um, you felt comfortable with moving forward? Is it, has it always been that or have you dabbled in other kind of the, the typical stuff that you're taught when you get into real estate as far as uh, the FISBOs and expireds and, you know, go into a lot of social events, but you've, you've stayed to the path of the veteran community. I have because that's what has been working with for me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of times people say, you know, if, if it's working, don't, right, right. don't change it, you know? Yep. But I, I mean, at the beginning, that's what all, all agents do at the beginning because that's what's told to, of them to call FISBOs, call expireds. But, I mean, I think the, the real thing that got me to not do that anymore is when I texted a uh, FISBO and uh, the response back from that, that uh, seller was like, oh, man, you're the, you know, you're the first one to contact me. 
And I messaged back. I said, really? That, that's surprising. <laughs> right. He goes, no, you're probably about the 150th one yeah. to contact me. And I'm like, okay, you know, yep. it kind of, and I, I don't say this in a negative way, but yeah. it kind of reminded me of when I was on recruiting Yep. and the Marines always had the office all the way in the back. Right. And the other services obviously were up front. So as soon as one of our applicants or one of our, our appointments would come in, yeah. it was like all of a sudden, boom, everybody's out of their office seeing who came in and trying to get them to come into their office. Right. And I'm up there, I'm like, I got to go out there. I'm like, man, no, he's here for me. Get away. You yeah. know? Yeah. So it, it, it just reminded me of the agents calling that FISBO or texting that FISBO of that. And I was like, you know, I didn't like that then. I'm not going to do it now. Mm -hmm. um, and it, that didn't pan out for me. So it's like one of those things, you try it. Did it work? Yes or no. If it worked, keep, keep doing it. If it didn't work, mm -hmm. try something different. And that's not to say that that won't work for another agent. That just wasn't something that I wanted to spend my time doing mm -hmm. if it wasn't, and if it wasn't working out. Um, and then as far as with the other other types of, of clients, you know, other than VA, I mean, I have a lot of clients that are, are not veterans. Um, some of them are, are like the veterans family or what, right. so might have some connections somewhere down the line. Mm -hmm. But I'm not exclusively for veterans, um, but I'd help as many veterans as I can. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome what you've done so far. And um, so what what is some of the, what would, you, what would you say like the top, three things for a consumer vet. So a veteran that got out and the benefits that they have, what are the three best things? Since you are a recruiter, we got like super, <laughs> superstar in here that knows all the benefits and the sales. I would tell people all the benefits of going in the military when I, when I was in, as far as like, there's a lot of good things for an 18 year old, as far as the things that you get during and after the military. Uh, the benefits to uh, consumers as, I mean, veteran consumers as they get out, what what are the, the three best things that a lot of veterans aren't using right now as far as their, their benefits, as far as the GI Bill um, the, and the VA loan, um, a few other things is probably out there as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the GI Bill is definitely good if they're wanting to go to college. You know, if they, if for some reason they did take advantage of the college, the free college while they were in service. Yep. Um, then the GI Bill will, will benefit them after. The only thing with that is with, with me, I, I just think that that kind of prolongs the growing up, mm -hmm. you know, at a, getting out of the military and getting, like, actually getting out on your own. Because we all know being in the military, yes, you are on your own, but you're not because you still have somebody telling you what to do, mm -hmm. when to do it, how to do it, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're getting out and you're actually going out on your own, yeah, the the... GI Bill is good if that's the path that you want to go down. Um, if you're getting out and you're getting right into the workforce, then I would say, you know, make sure that you um, have filed your VA claim uh, because you went in 100% healthy. Okay. You went to MEPS. They For took, health, your health reasons. Yes. Okay, yeah. So go and make sure that you have the your VA claim so that um, if you do have a, a, a it's a disability rating, right? You can get the health care that you're going to need, right? Um, for for life, yeah. Because you know, health care it's expensive right now, and if you rate it through the VA, oh, get it. How many people did you see? I like, got out because I I know probably a handful of guys that just didn't go through as far as the the medical, and you got to go through everything and tell them what's going on. And a lot of guys were just so lazy on on their getting out. They kind of avoided the whole medical things and saying there's nothing wrong with me and they're just a bunch of young tough guys. <laughs> but how many how many guys came back and they didn't file? There, there's a lot, and that's that's another thing too is like when when it comes to having a veteran client, that's one of the questions that that I ask, and we're allowed to ask that because we're asking that so that we can benefit them. Yep. We're not asking that to try to discriminate towards them or anything like that because it's not discriminatory to ask that, mm -hmm. especially because if they say no, then it's like why. And that's that whole thing like, oh, well, you know, somebody else needs it more than me. Right. Like, really? Yeah. You spent four years of your life. You signed that line. You you volunteered to make that ultimate sacrifice. Yeah. You rate it. You you are that person that you're talking about. Yeah. You rate to have that benefit as long as you have, you know, the, obviously the documentation, the, the VA says yes. Yep. Then you rate it. Um, I kind of, it goes, it kind of goes back to like when you were in, you know, supply. Every August, supplier was like, hey, we got this much money to spend. Yeah. Spend it. Why? Because they won't get that money the next year if it's not spent. 
everybody, the VA has a budget also. If they don't have somebody to give that money to, then they're not going to get that money. If Or the, the benefits, uh, not necessarily only money, but the benefits that come along with, with that. Um, I think a lot of the veterans don't do it also because that stigma that the VA has, oh, it's going to take forever. They're just going to deny me anyway. Right. Guess what? Negative you attitude. Don't, you don't get what you don't ask for. Right. If you don't apply for it, you'll never know if you got it or not. Right. So being in the community too, especially working with 92 for 22, when we find veterans that are not, um, that, that don't have a claim or have never even filed for a claim, right. we get them connected with the veteran service officers so that they can get that claim started up. And you'd be surprised at how many come back and they're like, well, th- thanks for letting me know because yeah. if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have pushed myself to get it. Right. That's awesome. As far as the the veterans that get out uh, and want to be a business owner or a realtor, what are some of the, the best traits or um, uh, benefits that the VA offers to veterans to start a business or get into real estate? What are some of the things that veterans are missing about themselves or the benefits that they have? They kind of sweep it under the rug that they have no opportunity and they, that there's nothing out there for them, but there's a lot of good things that come out of the military. Yeah, there, I mean, there's there's a lot. And I think it goes back to those intangibles, those things that you can't touch. We always talked about that uh, while I was a recruiter. I yep. keep going back to that, but I mean, that's that's where I learned yep. about business and, and how to conduct myself. You, know, you have those intangibles, the things you can't touch, leadership skills, the management skills, the self-discipline, the self-reliance, all those tags. I don't, re- I don't know if you remember those benefit tags that were put in front of you. Yeah. Um, but 14 traits. I don't know exactly. I think it was 11. No, oh, you're talking about the the 14 leadership trees. Yeah, yeah. But the benefit tags, uh, okay. we had 11 benefit tags. Some of them were tangible. Some of them were intangible. Okay. And I loved it when they picked the intangible. That's exactly what the military gives. Right. Those are the things, the things that you can't touch that you're going to get them regardless if you want them or not. Yeah. That is what companies are looking for in, in their employees in order to continue that success of that company. And especially the, the self-discipline and the self-direction becoming a real estate agent because you're you're on your own. Yeah. You do have your mentors, you have your sponsors, you have your the leaders that will help you. Yeah. But you have to have the discipline to get up every morning, get dressed and yeah. get to work. Yeah. There there's some out there and you you'll know which ones they are. Yeah. That they don't get up in the morning. Yeah. They sleep until eleven o'clock morning and then they decide to get up and Yeah get on those video games instead of getting out there and prospecting and right. going out, shaking hands, Right, you know, well, I, I, business cards. I can, <laughs> I can empathize when I got out, I was pretty, pretty, pretty lost. I was, you know, I went to college and had to start, you know, working in a restaurant, doing lawn care. So it was a pretty humbling experience to wear the uniform and be a sergeant in the, in the, in the Marines and then getting out and all of a sudden you're a nobody. Um, so that, takes a moment for you to adjust to this new identity. So I understand what they're going through um, and how they need more leaders like yourself or maybe me to start a group and saying you have benefits and you have military skill sets that are valuable in the workforce. Because a lot of us, including myself, came out and were like, I, I don't have any skill sets. I, I mean, and I, I know that feeling because when I retired in 2018, I was the operations chief for the state of Michigan. So I had people calling me every single day, and um, May 30th uh, was the last time that I that I put the uniform on to go to work. Mm-hmm. And June 1st, uh, there were no phone calls. I was like, oh man, you know, all of a sudden, yeah, how would I do? Yeah. <laughs> so I I think I had it a little bit easier though, um, just because I was in in the recruiting field for so long. Mm-hmm. So I was able to already climatize with the civilian way of doing things because I was out here. I wasn't on a base for the 22 years. Otherwise, I think my transition would have been a lot different. Um, but I do help out veterans when they're getting out. I had my buddy just retired over in Texas. Uh, he was going through the uh, the, the real estate course and everything. And you know, I was sitting there telling him in regards to my success to so that he was confident that he was going to be successful in real estate also once he retired. Yeah, no, I think we should start a group um, and just have people get on there and sit down with Ken and we can uh, just continue to encourage them or f- kind of separate separate the pros and cons of what where they're at in their career and try to help them establish a direction because uh, so many veterans don't have that direction when they get out. Yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't mind sitting down with people. I mean, sit, send me over to those classes, you know, that, that they take to get out. Yeah. 
I'll sit there. I'll be one of those. Uh, we should probably do that, guys. We're probably <laughs> going to start a group here soon. <laughs>